Right, so last section, we're going to talk about the most important thing, which are the users, because uh, if the users aren't happy, then your building's failed. So it can look really pretty, but if those users aren't singing your praises, they won't be singing your praises, they'll hate you, because everyone has a complaint. But if um, they're not happy with the mixed mode operation, then it really hasn't worked. Um, a building that, that works well needs good controls, and by controls I mean, well from a user point of view, it's the things that are on the wall that allow them to change the aircon, turn it on and off. Also the things that tell them what the system's doing, and that's really important. Is the aircon even on? I don't know. Or maybe there's a light that tells me it's on, that tells me it is on. At home I know it's on because I've turned it on, but in a commercial environment, often people have no idea what's going on in, within the building. Um, the other thing, the other aspects of control is the thermostats um, as well as the things that open the windows. So often in the commercial situation you're going to have operable windows, uh, as in motorised windows, uh, but you can also have manually operated ones. So the, the, you can think of the controls as the interface between the user and the building um, services and they're usually the most poorly done of all the aspects of building services. What usually happens is the architect has a, has a vision for the building which often doesn't include building services because you know, it's not that glamorous. Um, so the mechanical engineer uh, decides what controls are going to go in. Uh, the electrical engineer, so they're over here, he, uh, he doesn't really specify them. Exactly, so they go on a wall because the contractor came in and that wall was really easy to access that day. And then there's the electrical consultant and she doesn't really care where the switches go as long as they're near the door. So she just says put them near the door, the contractor comes in, puts them near the door. Then there's a fan installer, they put them somewhere else. So you've got this smattering of controls across your building. Uh, all of which really should be in the same place because they're doing the same thing. So if you had a um, normal user interface or in your car, for example, you don't have the steering wheel here and then the pedals over on the other side and then a button that turns your windscreen wipers you know, behind you. Everything's in the same place. So the same philosophy um, you can apply to any user interface design. And it's also in a building, you have, you have a user interface as an architect, you don't have to do all the detail usually, but um, uh, I mean, your job is essentially spatial planning. So part of that spatial planning should be what zones are being operated by which equipment. Often it's completely arbitrary and it's split between functional areas. Um, so group your air conditioning zones logically and put all the controls in one spot or tell your consultants to put all your, to give them a spot, mark it on drawing and say put all your controls in this area. Okay, an example of a control system that I designed that um, you'll see how it went is this one which I made it as simple as as I could. This is um, quite a long time ago. I drew up all the, all the nitty gritty switches and everything and I thought it was going to be awesome. I saw it installed and went, that's great, that's so simple, anyone could understand that. It's a mixed mode building. Um, I went back to do a post, or a colleague of mine did a post occupancy survey and this is what they saw. So you can see between the, um, the first and the second, the users didn't understand the system. I thought it was simple as a designer, it wasn't simple enough for them and that's a failing on my part. There's no point in blaming the users because every user is essentially the same from a point of view of they just want to get their work done, they don't want to be struggling with controls. So what they've done in this example is just block out all the weird complex stuff and just left one switch which is on, off or auto and that's what it should have been to start with. All right, so how can we kind of think about uh, controls with some kind of framework and any of these frameworks I always think they're a little bit arbitrary but um, I've picked the one which I think makes the most sense to me and the nice thing about it is that it kind of brings out some principles because we talk about controls but it's all a bit uh, up in the air 
So we're going to try to break it down to uh, a small number of principles which you can then follow and apply to, to a variety of situations. So this somewhat confusing diagram um, simply breaks up uh, thinking about controls into the physical aspect, which is the, the two boxes on the top, and the behavioural aspect, which is the users, and the boxes on the bottom. And then on the left-hand side, we have global things, so things that you don't have to um, think about in terms of a specific context. And then on the right-hand side, it's really local things, so sitting next to a window, you need to think about the particular task that they're doing. So let's um, just look at each of those in turn. So this, this quadrant, the top left quadrant, where we've got, we're talking about physical as aspects of controls from a global point of view. So that means just the stuff that happens in the background. So in most buildings, you walk in, you don't think, oh, I need to turn on the aircon in an office building. You go into a hospital, you don't think, oh, I wonder how the aircon's going. It just does its thing. Um, that's great and it works really well in some circumstances and the, the, the thing to get out of that is that it's simple. So from a user's point of view, if they don't have to control it, don't get them to, just, just automate it um, and they won't have to think about it. The problem comes when you have a mixed mode building because someone has to choose whether that building is going to be in mixed mode operation, uh, in natural ventilation mode or in um, air conditioning mode. So a computer can do that if you want and um, you can say if it's hotter than X outside, air condition. People don't mind that if it's a communal kind of space. So in really large offices, hospitals perhaps, um, in public buildings, so I've seen it in universities, where no one really takes control of the space no one's going to make the effort to, or no one's there long enough, more than a few hours, to be able to decide, so you give it to a computer. So a lot of the, the BMSs, the building management systems, can easily do that, and they just open the windows. Getting those details right is pretty tricky, and if you're not careful, it ends up just with a few temperature complaints. So the building management personnel come in and just close the whole building off, so um, there are you know, there is a fair bit of detail if you want to get that right to put in and to discuss with the, the controls people to make sure that the system is working automatically but is also actually um, keeping people happy. Um, a good principle is that the, the controls are there to support people so what, what you ideally like to do and um, what I didn't do in that example was to automate the things that could be automated. So on one of those switches which was pasted out in the photo was ventilation. So in the jobs I do now I have a, a occupancy sensor and so not air conditioning just ventilation. People come in, the system can really easily sense that someone's in the space and that the windows are open and it just ventilates it. They don't have to know about it. Um, they don't care about it, but it's, it's essential because if you don't ventilate then you get odour um, and it'll get stuffy and people will complain. So automate what you can um, <coughs> and put those things into the background where, where people don't even see them. Okay, the next one is other systems which require, um, they require people to be involved. So this is a situation where you might be in a smaller office and people want to have control of their environment. So they're happy to work with the windows open on a nice day, but they want control and nearly everyone prefers having control of their environment for obvious reasons. People generally don't like a computer telling them what to do. They'd rather have a switch that lets them open the windows or close it because they know what their needs are. In order for that to work, those controls, and this is what I failed at in that initial example, need to be really clear, like, like you know, crystal clear and really simple, easy to find. So if you walk around any building, nearly any building, you'll see a white box on the wall with some buttons on it. 
and maybe it operates the aircon for the room next door, or maybe it operates this room, or maybe it works for a few hours. It's really not clear. So um, some simple signs and some simple instructions can make all the difference. And rather than having um, detailed screens and whatnot, just simple on-off buttons is often better. And you can even explicitly say, this button turns on the aircon for two hours. And you might think, and the contractor certainly thinks that's the most obvious thing in the world because they installed the two hour run on timer and they just put an AC on it. But for the users, think about it from a user's point of view, they didn't do the install obviously. There's a whole lot of white buttons on the wall. They need to know which one to press. Um, while you're at it, those, um, those kind of after hours buttons, which you'll see in offices, um, are a good example of manual override. So in nearly all circumstances, people don't get manual override, so you can't turn off. I do a lot of audits in libraries and offices, and I say, how do you control your aircon? How do you turn it off? And like, well, I don't know, you can't turn it off, it just, it's just on. So particularly in a mixed, mil mixed mode building, you need to give them the option to just turn that air conditioning off. So essentially that's an on-off switch. Okay, the next quadrant is um, thinking about users in a global sense. So we usually don't do that um, as engineers or architects. We think about them as um, clients for the building, but not necessarily the people that are going to use the building. And they need to be trained in how to use the building. So that usually boils down to some specification clauses saying allow X hours, X days to undertake user training in how to use the building. You don't need to do that if it's air conditioned and on a time clock because it just happens, but you do need to explain to the users ongoing because there's always new users, so you need to think of a system, uh, some kind of training system where people are told how the building works because it's not just as um, easy as walking in and it's air conditioned. Last quadrant is um, local, thinking about local users. So there's someone in the corner that gets hot, how do you deal with that? Um, usually in an air conditioned, fully air conditioned building they ring the facilities manager and a technician comes out and cranks up the damper. In a mixed mode building you don't necessarily have to do that if you've thought about flexibility. So there are alternatives to having a fixed amount of air. There's task air for example which allows people to vary how much air they get. Ceiling fans are a, a really great way of doing this so that that person that's always hot in the corner, uh, if they've got a ceiling fan which is individually controllable, they just crank it up. So you have a local control, you don't have a bank of a thousand switches that turn on all the ceiling fans at all at one speed, you have individual controls. And think about what's going to happen when things change, particularly in an office. Nearly every office is changed, uh, re refitted every say five years, um, is typical. So. There's not a lot of point in trying to second guess the users, but provide flexibility where, where you can. It's not always possible. Uh, and that means things like having manual override switches, having local switches, rather than just a single floor as one massive zone, because they might chop it up into five zones with different tenancies. Okay, so wrapping up with controls, um, if we had to put it in a, in a list, group all your controls together. Um, fans, lights, etc. Make it clear what that button controls, not only with a little label, but also with, uh, we did this in the um, Royal Flying Doctors up in Mount Isa. Each of the zones that was controlled by air conditioning had a slightly different colour and a slightly dis different ceiling finish, so they could easily tell, oh, I'm pressing the, all this grey area is going to turn on, because often you don't know where the zone finishes. Provide some feedback. So um, even if it's just a simple air conditioning is on light, it's better than nothing because often air conditioning is so quiet you can't even tell it's on. You might open the window and you've still got the aircon on. Provide a manual override and a good strategy is just default to off. So a good example is with your fridge, if you leave the door open it's going to turn off. But if you have a building and you leave the door open and the windows open, that building doesn't default to off. It just runs and tries to air condition the whole world, which doesn't work. So run on timers where you press for a few hours of air conditioning, you might press for four hours, for example, means that 
you don't have all this complexity of trying to work out exactly what the time clock should be because going back to the, that flexibility we talked about, people are always changing what they're doing, tenants are changing. Um, and have a think about if you were a user, what you're actually going to do. You walk into the space on a summer's day, in the morning you think, well, it's a bit hot, where are you going to go to turn it on, how are you going to know? Imagine yourself in a, in a use case um, using the building. Um, and finally, automate, automate what you can and for the rest of it, leave it up to the users. Okay, so we've got a final little picture here of all this coming together. We've got um, a nice shaded glazed facade on the right hand side. There's louvers at high level which are secure and openable. There's ceiling fans. Uh, you can see the air conditioning up on the top there. You can't see the controls but they're all grouped together on the left hand side there. And there's good passive design with um, lots of daylight but it's well shaded with those horizontal elements on the right and a fair bit of thermal shaded mass on the floor there. Um, so that wraps it up.